I heard an old story. Thank you for tuning in to the television ministry of Clay's Mill Baptist Church. Join us as we share our passion for soul winning, spiritual growth, and revival in our state and nation. And now, Pastor Jeff Fugit. Good evening and welcome to the program tonight. Thank you so much for tuning in. I believe the program will be a blessing to you. You have time now to text or call a friend and let them know that Brother Fugit and his family are on the television program this evening. If you would take time to share the program. Uh, to your Facebook page if you're watching by way of Facebook, and I appreciate those who are all across America, and I hear from Hawaii to Maine, Florida, Washington, I hear from Canada, Philippines, India, uh, Uganda, around the world, and I'm thankful for the many folks that watch by way of Facebook, and of course, I appreciate those that are watching right here in the state of Kentucky. Uh, by way of WLJC television. Let me take just a moment and say thank you to the many people who made their voice known in Frankfurt against uh, sports betting, uh, sports gambling, and uh, for those that prayed and appealed to the God of heaven. Uh, this past week ended this year's uh, General Assembly, and there was a big push uh, for sports gambling uh, in our state. In fact, uh, the measure passed the House with a divided leadership, uh, some of the leaders for it, some of it against it, and uh, they forced uh, a vote, and they had uh, several Republicans to join Democrats and to pass the measure out of the House. It went over to the Senate, and there was not enough votes, not enough support for it in the Senate uh, to make it law, and I'm very thankful. And uh, one of the reasons that it was not, uh, uh, the votes were not there is because of the pressure and the uh, voices of the people and the conservative uh, folks that are in the Senate that oppose uh, sports betting. Now, sports betting may be small, uh, may, some may think it's small, but it's a really big deal uh, because uh, many folks or most folks do sports gambling and sports betting on their phone. And a study over the last uh, two years in the state of Indiana revealed that many, many people became addicted gamblers. No one knew about it because they were doing so on their phone, uh, alone, often at night by themselves, and they became addicted to that, betting on different uh, games, uh, sporting events, and uh, it's a terrible, terrible form of gambling. All gambling is wrong, and a lot of folks have said, well, if this is right, what's wrong with this, and what's wrong with this? And uh, one uh, gentleman I told this past week, uh, when he said, well, alcohol is legal, and I said, uh, but if it was up to me, and I could lead enough people to sign a petition, we'd make that illegal too. And I hear folks say, well, you can't legislate morality. Tell God that. Exodus chapter 20, uh, the Bible says, Thou shalt not in ten different commandments God gives us uh, to live by. And uh, so those things are important. Just a word of thanks. I appreciate it. It's a victory, and we rejoice in that. Now, evil uh, is something that you fight against constantly. Uh, fight against constantly. I was on my way uh, this morning uh, over to the church, and I heard, uh, I turned on the radio, and it was uh, supposedly talking about sports. And they was talking about a Hank Williams Jr. concert, and I believe I'm right in that name. And they said that he put a jug of whiskey or a bottle of whiskey, and he said when that whiskey's gone, the concert's over. They said he sang four songs and passed out, and they were just laughing and saying, what a way to go. Hey, friend, there's coming a reckoning day. There's coming a reckoning day for our sin, and that's why it's important that we preach the gospel and men turn from their sin and turn to Christ. And that's one of the main reasons and one of the main uh, uh, focuses of this uh, radio uh, television program is to preach the gospel and to warn of sin, death, and judgment. We need to be ready uh, to meet the Lord. Well, tomorrow is a special day. It is Easter Sunday, and we celebrate celebrate the resurrection of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Imagine how they must have felt on that Saturday uh, when Christ's body had been placed in the grave and the one who had uh, uh, told them that he was a Messiah, that he was God in the flesh, 
had been crucified. Oh, but as the sun rose that next morning, he arose from the grave. I'll preach about it in just a few minutes. Come and celebrate uh, the resurrection of Christ with us right here at Clay's Mill Baptist Church in the morning at 1030. Now, we'll be working to make sure there are plenty of seats. And uh, this past Sunday, uh, we were full. In fact, we were packed and had folks in the overflow. Uh, we will have more seats available tomorrow. I want you to come. I want you to be here for a very special Easter Sunday tomorrow morning at uh, 1030. Then let me tell you where I'll be preaching in the next few days. And if you live in that region, I'd love for you to come and be a part of those meetings. I'll be at the New Hope Baptist Church with Brother Chris Dallas on Monday and Tuesday. Uh, that is in Lexington, Indiana. It's about two hours from here, and I look forward to being back at this good church. It's been a while since I've been there, and I look forward to preaching there each evening at 7 p.m. Now, on Tuesday morning, I'll be leaving early from Lexington, Indiana, and driving over uh, to the Faith Baptist Church of Bourbonnet, Illinois. Uh, Bourbonnet, Illinois is uh, where uh, the Faith Baptist Church is, and it is the host church for the National Revival Fires Conference and our good friend, Dr. Dennis Corral. I'll preach the closing message on Tuesday morning. I'll be leaving immediately after that, driving back to Lexington, Indiana, and preaching there to close that meeting on Tuesday night. I'll be home Wednesday night for the Bible study as I continue the series on winning on the, bat winning on the battlefield for the mind. I wish I had time now to tell you more about it, but I want you to come Wednesday and hear that Bible study. Early Thursday morning, I'll be flying to Dallas, Texas, and I'll be preaching in the 11 o'clock hour uh, Thursday morning at the Baptist Leadership Conference in Mesquite, Texas. I'll teach a session on uh, Thursday afternoon, and then I'll preach the closing message for the Baptist Leadership Conference on Thursday evening, uh, Thursday evening at 7 o'clock. That's the Parkside uh, Baptist Church. Dr. Shelton Smith and I uh, will be closing the service on uh, this Thursday evening, April the 21st. And then next Monday and Tuesday, I'll be at the Gospel Light Baptist Church up in Hastings, Michigan. This is a great church. Brother Pete Peterson is a pastor there. An exciting place and, and a little church and a growing church. In fact, they packed out their building and we're looking forward to a great revival. I hope our friends will come and join us for that. And then I want to mention that May 2nd and 3rd, I will be at the Roundtown Baptist Church in York, Pennsylvania with Pastor Joe Moore. I look forward to to being there. I've known Brother Joe Moore since he was just a boy and uh, been a faithful servant of the Lord. I want to mention one other. On May the 1st, I will celebrate my 31st anniversary as the pastor of Clays Mill Baptist Church. Sunday school will begin at 9.30, church at 10.30, just like usual. On Sunday evening, we're going to have an old-fashioned gospel sing. That will begin at 5 o'clock. We are going to have a wonderful time, 5 o'clock on Sunday evening. We'll have a preaching hour at 6 o'clock, and then right after the evening service, my son and I, John, uh, we're going to fix smoked pork now, hickory smoked pork for everybody in attendance on Sunday night. We're expecting hundreds of folks. We want you to come and be a part of that, that celebration. The Lord's been mighty good to me. And I have the privilege to serve some of the finest, some of the greatest laymen and families in all of the world. I uh, just can't tell you what it means to me, uh, the joy of serving with so many wonderful people uh, that uh, make this ministry what it is today. I want to mention just quickly about our building. I want you to come by and see the progress of the work that's going on. Uh, they're working and have been all week, the electricians, the plumbers, the framers, and it is really coming along. Thank you to those that gave our offering last week just for the building was $75,000. And uh, we need about $2 million to finish the building. And step by step and inch by inch, it's a cinch and we'll get it done. And uh, everybody doing uh, their part, asking God uh, to bless it. Those are the announcements. Let me get to the first song. This song will be a blessing to you as my family comes now to sing. God sent his son, they called him Jesus, he came to love, heal and forgive, he lived and died, to buy my pardon, and empty 
my Savior lives, because He lives, I can face tomorrow, because He lives, all fear is gone, because I know And then one day I'll cross that river, I'll fight life's final war with pain. And then as death gives way to I'll see the lights of glory and I'll know He lives because He lives. I can face tomorrow because He lives. All fear is gone because I know He holds the future and life is worth the living just because He lives. He I'm preaching from the book of Mark in chapter 16, a message entitled, A Message of the Easter Angel. The Message of the Easter Angel. You know, as you go through the scripture, you'll find that big events, important events, life-changing events, were announced ahead of time by a special angel of heaven. For example, in Genesis chapter 19, he sent a message from an angel that Sodom and Gomorrah uh, were, were going to be destroyed because of their sin. And of course, uh, the name Sodom, sodomy, homosexuality, uh, God set an example and God talked about that abomination, said it was an abomination all the way through an unnatural affection. And he destroyed those cities because of that sin. And an angel made a special announcement about that. In Judges chapter 13, an angel declared the birth of Samson. In Luke chapter 1, we have the announcement of the birth of John the Baptist. In Luke chapter 1, verse number 11, we have uh, the angel that makes an announcement of the conception of the Lord Jesus Christ, conceived of the Holy Spirit in the virgin womb of Mary. And then Luke chapter 2, verses 8 through 14, we have the announcement of the birth of Christ, and the angels made a grand announcement. Well, on the first Easter morning, as dawn is breaking on a world that was forever changed, a special angel delivered a special message and a message that is still vitally important today, one we continue to declare and will declare tomorrow all over the world about the risen Savior. Let me go to the text now and read the story uh, that we find in Mark chapter 16 beginning in verse number 1. And when the Sabbath was passed, that Saturday the Sabbath is passed, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome had brought sweet spices that they might come and anoint him. And very early in the morning, the first day of the week, they came unto the sepulcher of the rising of the sun. And they said among themselves, Who shall roll us away the stone from the door of the sepulcher? And when they looked, they saw that the stone was rolled away, for it was very great. And entering into the sepulcher, 
they saw a young man sitting on the right side, clothed in a long white garment, and they were affrighted. And he saith unto them, Be not affrighted. Ye seek Jesus of Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they laid him. But go your way, tell his disciples and Peter that he goeth before you into Galilee. There shall ye see him as he said unto you. And they went out quickly and fled from the sepulcher, for they trembled and were amazed. Neither said they anything to any man, for they were afraid. Well, fear and dread filled the hearts of this little band of women as they had made their way through the dark streets and alleys of Jerusalem that early that Sunday morning. And they were going to the tomb of the man uh, that they had believed on to be the Messiah, the man for whom they had left all things uh, to follow. Uh, they were going to the tomb of a man that had promised life uh, to all that would come to him, but he now himself is dead. Certainly they were confused. They were confounded as they came near the tomb. They had a love, they had a respect and admiration for him as they brought the spices uh, to anoint the body of the Lord Jesus. They had a concern that they would even be able to get to the body because of the huge stone that was there. And, and they asked among themselves and wondered, who's going to move this stone for us? How are we going to get this away so we can get in and see and anoint the body of the Lord Jesus? Well, as they come within sight of the tomb, of the tomb they were astounded to see that the stone had already been rolled away. There were Roman guards lying like dead men all around the mouth of the tomb uh, that they had placed there to protect and, uh, as they said, keep someone from stealing the body of Christ. And seeing this, they ran in the tomb and they looked in only to find that the body of the Lord Jesus was gone and fear gripped their hearts. It was there that the angel said to them, He's not here, He's risen. <laughs> Hallelujah. He made the announcement to these dear ladies that love the Lord Jesus that he is not here. He is risen. Now I have a message to preach about that uh, declaration that he made. But the truth is there's such a joy and excitement in my heart just to declare the words, he is risen. Hey, folks, Jesus is not in the grave. Jesus is seated at the right hand of the Father. Jesus is not dead. He is alive forevermore. Uh, Jesus is exactly who he said he was. He was God in the flesh that came to fulfill the will of the Father, uh, to die on the cross and pay for our sin that we might have eternal life. He finished his course. Uh, he finished the work that the Father had sent him to do. He said, I do always those things that please the Father. He lived and walked among men. Uh, he lived a sinless life. Uh, he went to the cross of Calvary bearing in his body our sin and our shame. He hung on the cross of Calvary. He paid for our sin. They put him in the tomb after he was dead. But after three days and nights, he arose from the grave on that first day of the week. What a joy. What an excitement. What a victory to know. I serve a risen Savior. He's in the world today. I know that he's living. But whatever men may say, I see his hand of mercy. I hear his voice. And dear friend, I know that he's living and because he lives within my heart. What a joy it is to serve a risen Savior. I'm not preaching about a religion tonight. I'm preaching about a relationship with the person of the Lord Jesus Christ. Let me give you some things that I have in the message to preach about this angel's message that he gave to the ladies. Hey, he's not here. He 
is risen. Go tell folks. Go tell Peter. Go let them know that Jesus fulfilled what he had come to do. First of all, I want to point out it was a message of peace. He said, be not affrighted. He said, there's no need for you to fear. May I say today as a child of God, no matter what the circumstances are within or without or around us, we can have peace with God. Even though the storm rages, there's peace in the storm cellar. Even though there's difficulty around, there is a calmness within Uh, Jesus is the victor. Jesus is the captain uh, of our team. It was a message of peace for several reasons. First of all, I'm saved. Uh, The only thing that can happen to me is depart from this life and begin eternal life in heaven. Hebrews 7.25 talks about my redemption, talks about my salvation and the fact that I have uh, peace with God. Uh, Peace because even in death, I have victory. Now some would call it death and it's okay. I like what Paul called it. He said the time of my departure is at hand. We have victory not only in life, we have victory in death. It is a message of peace for eternity. For eternity. Uh, Jesus said in John chapter 14, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, believe also in me. He went on to say that he was going to prepare a mansion for us and he was coming to receive us unto him. The angel gave a message of peace. It not only was a message of peace, it was a message of power. Boy, I love this. I could go on right here for 30 minutes uh, just on this point that it was a message of power. They made the statement, be not affrighted because he is risen. Now, Jesus wasn't the first to raise from the dead. Lazarus had been raised from the dead uh, when the voice of the Lord Jesus cried out, Lazarus, uh, come forth. Uh, The widow uh, of Nain's uh, son, uh, the the boy was raised uh, from the dead uh, during that funeral procession. And then Jairus' daughter in Mark chapter 5 rose from the dead. But now these folks died again. Uh, Lazarus came to the place that he died again. Lazarus rose from the grave, but he died again. Hey, dear friend, when Jesus rose from the grave, he arose forevermore. It is a message of power. He is risen. And not only did Jesus raise from the grave, he is still alive. It's a message of power because he rose again. It's a message of power because he was able himself to conquer death. All this great resurrection power will be ultimately realized when Jesus returns and raises every believer in Christ from the grave. They'll be raised first and then we'll meet them in the air. We'll catch them and meet them in the air and be with the Lord forevermore. The message of the angel was a message of peace when he said, be not affrighted. It was a message of power Uh, when he declared to them that Jesus is risen. It's more than that. It was a message of potential. Verse number six. And he saith unto them, be not affrighted. You seek Jesus from Nazareth, which was crucified. He is risen. He is not here. Behold the place where they had laid him. He's not here. That meant he was someplace else. Now, when you think of the life and ministry of Christ before the crucifixion, he went about doing good. He went about uh, healing the sick. Uh, He went about making the lame to walk again, the blinded eyes to see, the deaf ears to hear again, and all of the work that he did. And, of course, he did this, giving the gospel that if they would believe in him, they could have eternal life. Oh, but now think about it. He's risen from the grave. The proof has been shown. Uh, The power of... Of the resurrection has been uh, has taken place and now they said he is not here just imagine what he was doing now and the potential of the message of the resurrection of Christ you see after Jesus arose from the dead he immediately disappears and then appears to be busy doing something important I believe I know what he did first. I believe as a great high priest, he took the blood that was shed on the cross of Calvary and he took it to the mercy seat in heaven. Ah, dear friend, and when he put that blood on the mercy seat, just as the priest had done through the many years in the Old Testament economy, as a picture of a covering for sin, 
The Bible says that the high priest, the great high priest, Jesus Christ, in the book of Hebrews, he entered once into the Holy of Holies and he sprinkled the blood and he put the blood on the mercy seat. And dear friend, I am forgiven. I am forgiven evermore. As the psalmist said in Psalm number 32, blessed is he to whom the Lord imputeth not iniquity, not only on the day of salvation when I received, when I believed on him, not only only did he forgive me of my sin. He has never imputed another sin to my account. And he gave to me his wonderful robe of salvation, the garment of salvation. He gave to me uh, his righteousness. And I'm going to heaven not because of who I am, but because of who he is. Now, Jesus took the blood to the mercy seat in heaven. Oh, but dear friend, he does more than that. We think of the potential. He is our intercessor. Uh, Hebrews 7, 20. In Romans 8.34 He's always watching over us Hebrews 4.13 He's our advocate 1 John 2.2 2. You need an attorney He is the best Against the accusations And uh, uh, the false claims of Satan He's my advocate He's preparing a place for us He's waiting for the Father To send him after his children Hebrews 10 And verse number 13 It was a message of, uh, of, of power And it was a message of potential Aren't you glad for the wonderful fact, Mark chapter 16, that Jesus rose from the grave. Hey, here's the best news. He's coming again. Jesus is coming again. Be ready to meet him and meet him now. Thank you so much for watching the program tonight. We appreciate so much you tuning in. Here's a good song as we go off the air. I serve a risen Savior, He's in the world today. I know that He is living, whatever men may say. I see His hand of mercy, I hear His voice of cheer. And just the time I need Him, He's always near. Jesus lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. He lives, he lives, he lives, he lives salvation to impart. You ask me how I know he lives. He Rejoice, O Christian, lift up your voice and sing. Eternal hallelujahs to Jesus Christ the King. The hope of all who seek Him, the help of all who find. None other is so loving, so good and kind. He lives. lives today. He walks with me and talks with me along life's narrow way. 